This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by HostGator. How about some more Windows 8 fun? Oh, by the way, Veronica, yes. the, the fish, that's a beta. It's a beta, it's a beta I get fish. it, interesting, cool. <laughs> Thanks to whoever tweeted Pointed that, that out. one. In. Speaking of tweet, uh, tweeter, Twitter, at Lord Reservoir tweets, clicking on more details in Windows 8's task manager will give you a more powerful Windows task manager than ever before. And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking like, okay, control, alt, delete, and task manager, and you get this, and you're like, oh, hmm. oh, it's the saddest task manager ever, but he's right. More de or she's right. Take a look at more details. You start getting in here, and we've got, oh, look at the breakdowns on here. Performance, and app history, and your startup information, and user information, and details. If that would be what we think of your processes, services. It's just, it's really nice to start looking at physical breakdowns of how things are actually consuming power inside of the device or consuming clock cycles. I like the app history actually, so it's telling you like how much is CPU time, what it's doing over the network, metered network, tile updates. This is just a really cool set of tools for monitoring what's going Data. inside of your system. And of course, you can still end the task by right clicking. And killing that, kill that puppy, kill it. <laughs> Kill it. No, no, we need that for the demo. Okay. Here, I'll kill something else. Kill something else. End kill task it. store. End Fabulous. task. I love this because I love I love getting into the nitty gritty of yeah. the the data, the details, everything. And I know all this was available before, but I love being able to see it like this. It's beautifully It's all graphed. about the UI. Yes, and it's a much, 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 much better UI. Yes, and Travis <laughs> sent us this email. I have a question about Windows 8. Is there any reason for me to choose Windows 8 over Windows 7 for my desktop? I build my own systems, and Windows 7 runs fantastic. So is there anything in Windows 8 that says, okay, you have to get this. You said it's basically Win 7 Plus. Is that plus just the metro look and feel, or is there something I'm missing? I'm sure it will work great on a tablet, but I'm just interested in it as a desktop OS, and I'm not really looking forward to using my mouse as a virtual finger. Travis in Centerburg, Ohio. Okay, first of all, this is a consumer preview. You should be running it because you're curious about metro, you're a Windows guru that wants to know it's coming, or, you know, the, you're like me, the kind of people that love to beta operating systems. You know who you are. You have issues, <laughs> and you just new operating system. Let's see if it. Look, the start screen in Metro is for a lot of people. The start screen in Metro is going to be the big draw, um, and it, it's you know it's not. Yeah, is it is it designed to be tablet friendly? Is it designed to be similar to what's available in Windows 8? Absolutely. But I really actually am starting. The more I use it, the more I get used to using my mouse. So I take a look at this. I go down, mousing in the corners. Right, as I can click through things, I can move things around, mousing in the corners, um, and I can bring up the charms over here. This is all based on the mouse, right? So it's very friendly to the mouse. There are a lot of keyboard shortcuts in here because the people that build Windows, a lot of them never want to lift their hands off the keyboard. So there are keyboard shortcuts built in. Yes, it is touch screen friendly, but it is designed to absolutely, totally at this point be usable um, with the mouse. Storage spaces have a lot of potential to bring people on board, and of course, let me pull up Google Chrome, and Ars Technica has a really great article, a good mm -hmm. write-up on this. And storage spaces, think uh, Drive Extender from Windows Home Server um, on the desktop. So you can span drives, it makes it easy to add drives. It's basically, if you have eligible drives inside your system, you can start manipulating you know, how you turn them into one giant space, what you're doing with your backups and stuff. Um, I also got to say, they may call it a consumer preview. That's a beta. Do not run it on your production machine or your epic critical, like if this machine goes down, everyone on the ship dies. Do not put Windows 8 on that machine unless you're willing to have an epic fail. Not because Windows 8 is bad, but because it's a beta. And you don't put the so beta. I shouldn't put it on my brand new gaming PC. That would be I'm a bad running idea. it on my primary desktop right now. Well, but okay. that's the we way are, we roll. We are the exception to the rule. Not yeah. the <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the thing is, if, when, if your gaming machine goes down, you may get slaughtered. Because your avatar is sitting there, like you know, doing whatever the avatar does when the machine dies, but you know the plane's not going to fall out of the sky. We're right. not going to miss a production line, you know, deadline on Techzilla. If if the machine going down could ruin your life, wait until later to put Windows 8 on it. Not because it's bad, but just because that's the prudent, smart thing to do. I think I'm going to wait. You, I'm going to wait. I'll look at your computer instead. I'll, I'll let you know. It's good. See, yeah. I'm running it on one of my primary production machines because mm -hmm. I like the high stakes. High stakes. <laughs> 
You want to read this one? All right, sure. David wrote in asking, what's the scoop on Windows 8 Professional? I run an outsourced IT company, and I take care of small to medium-sized businesses and all of their IT needs. A few of my customers love to be early adopters of tech, and I'm wondering how the professional side of things are going to jive with the new Metro loadout screen. Most business customers don't want their end users linking the company machines to social media sites, and many of the other Metro apps featured so far look like they're geared to the personal user. So do you think Windows 8 will be more essential for the home user, or are there a, other tons of undiscovered servant client features yet to be seen in the consumer demo? Yeah, a, a ton would be about right. Yeah. So far, people are reporting that there are hints for eight. Eight. Did I say eight versions of Windows 8 in the consumer preview? Oh, that's um, very fitting. Uh, <laughs> It Jack. wouldn't be a Windows operating system if it didn't have 50 billion versions. Yeah, um, Jack Flavors. Schofield over at uh, uh, ZDNet.co.uk did a pretty good breakdown. Uh, so there's the Windows 8 Starter Edition, which is the one that's like, you know, it, basically not, that one won't be available inside the U.S. and Europe. Um, okay. Think Netbook Hell, maybe, or, or the Windows Starter Edition might be the Netbook Edition, but then there's the Windows 8 ARM Edition, which is only going to run on ARM devices. The Windows 8 Home Basic Edition, um, that's the one that will probably be outside the U.S. and Europe. The Windows 8 Home Premium Edition, which is what most of us will actually be using. The Windows 8 Ultimate, uh, Ultimate Edition, which is for people who need really brand new shiny cars every two years. Um, and the Windows 8 Professional Edition, that's the one that brings in drive encryption, stuff like that, very similar to Windows 7. That's the theory, right? It's going to be mm -hmm. like Windows 7 Professional. Windows 8 Professional Plus, the rumor, the idea that Jack's saying is like, hey, that's going to be um, small office features, small network features, control uh, over the system. Windows 8 Enterprise Edition, Microsoft is supposed to detail the enterprise deets at CBIT either this week or next week. And that's the one that's going to be like the super massive, we can lock down everything from the command servers the and the buke. version. Yeah, and I got to say, as far as the desktop goes, um, uh, Paul Thoreau actually did a really good thing uh, running consumer. He's got a good primer on customizing your Windows 8 start page up at the Win Super site. That guy's got a whole Windows 8 section. But look for running consumer preview. And what he does is you, if you scroll down past the sort of boring install parts, he's basically like, hey, this is what you do to customize the Windows 8 screen so you get exactly what you want, where you want. It's just the Windows 8 start screen. And it's really, really simple. I mean, you know, you go to the start page, and if you don't want this here, you know, <laughs> whoops, let me go out. Um, you can basically physically move things around. You can remove things from here. It's pretty easy to start changing stuff around. You mm -hmm. don't have to let people have stuff on there. Um, and you can go in and you can change the settings and delete stuff. You know, I presume on the, either the professional or the enterprise version, you will be able to lock down this interface and keep people from adding Twitter clients or Facebook or whatever it is you want to keep them from locking down because Microsoft wants people, wants their big giant corporate customers to move from Windows XP to Windows 8, so they're going to give them lots and lots and lots and lots of control unless oh, yeah. they've completely lost their minds in Redmond, but I don't think They'll keep it the locked case. down if they want it locked down. Oh, yeah. They will enable the lockdown. I'm yeah. sorry. Not sorry a lot of lockdown and consumer previews, though. <laughs> All right, well, we've got more Techzilla coming up, but first it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Looking for a place to launch a blog or a website? Are you frustrated with the customer support at your current hosting provider? You should go with HostGator and get up and running in minutes. Plans start at just $3.96 a month, and you get top-rated 24-7 customer support, access to tools including a website built with over 4,000 templates, and HostGator, they'll even migrate your current site for free. You want to reduce your carbon footprint while you're hosting on the web? Guess what? HostGator servers, 130% powered by wind energy. It is completely green web hosting. You also get a limited disk space, a limited bandwidth, a 45-day money-back guarantee, and $100, $100 in Google AdWords credit to market your new website or your old website. Whatever website you bring to HostGator, and right now, because you're a Revision 3 viewer, HostGator, they're going to offer you 25% off your order or your first month for free. Go to HostGator.com, enter in the code TechZillaHD at checkout to get your fat discount 25% off your order or your first month free. Check it out, people.